Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Elizabeth Cohen. I'm going to be your instructor uh, for COM 654, right? Right. <laughs> um, which is uh, called social marketing. And I think the best way to begin a class um, on social marketing is to clear up what I think is a pretty common misconception, uh, which is that because the word social is in uh, the title that this is a class about social media, it's not. This class is not about social media. Um, as a matter of fact, social marketing is something that predates social media by quite a bit. Um, social marketing is the study of how to change, well, not really study, sorry, practice. I'm such an academic, I can't get over it. Social marketing is all about trying to apply the principles we know about marketing products. Marketing, I don't know, uh, lemonade or uh, iPhones or whatever, right? Um, to understand how we can change people's behaviors. So the whole premise is basically, if you can sell people products, if you can get people to buy things, you can probably get them to buy behaviors too, right? So the people who are really interested in social marketing, um, you know, this application of applying marketing to behavior change uh, are people like um, public health, people who work in public health, um, or like uh, people who work in public safety, like OSHA, anybody who really wants to um, change how people behave to better um, themselves or better the environment or better the community, whatever it is. It's a very sort of pro-social um, pursuit, I guess you could say. Um, so actually, I, I would, even though actually when I was um, years ago, when I was putting this class together and getting it uh, pitched so that it would be added to our curriculum, um, people in the business school at WV were like, you can't teach this class on social media marketing. And I'm like, I'm not y'all teaching a class on social marketing. Media is not even in there. Um, although of course media is relevant to developing social marketing campaigns. It's just, that's not what this class is about. I think that if I was going to categorize where this class would fall in terms of like what realm of communication, I do think certainly it, it, it is about marketing, but I think it, it shares a lot with um, health communication. Um, but obviously, I wouldn't think that I, I wouldn't propose that this is something that people in a corporate MA class should take unless I thought it would benefit um, most people in terms of their goals at any organization. And the truth is, is because this class is all about how to kind of um, influence public behavior to influence people on a mass scale. Um, I think that no matter what you're doing, you can benefit from this class. Not just like professionally, but I think also personally, because uh, one thing that I hope you'll realize after you read the book and see all the examples we talk about is like, you've probably been targeted by a lot of social marketing efforts yourself. So this would make you a more critical consumer. Um, so that's what social marketing is. Um, <laughs> there's the introduction. Okay, bye everyone. See you next week. Uh, yeah, I wish. Uh, <laughs> you wish. Um, so the rest of the time, though, I do just, I, I want to talk about some things on the syllabus. Uh, the truth is, I'm definitely of the mindset that you can read for yourselves. And I know that listening to me talk, even listening to my pug snore um, is not, you know, it's not necessarily a great use of your time, but here's why I would encourage you to watch the rest of this video anyway. Um, I think it's different when you hear me say things about the class than when you just read them. If you really kind of want to understand what my expectations are, like hear me, hear me say them in my voice, you know. Um, but I will try to be as snappy as I possibly can. Um, okay, so. I would normally print out a syllabus, but I'm still at home, you know, working on the pandemic, yada, yada, yada. And I don't like using our, um, I want to say dot matrix. It's not a dot matrix computer. I don't like using our inkjet, ink, inkjet computer, inkjet computer, because it just seems so effortful. Like it takes forever for that thing to print anything. So I am just now looking on my computer screen here. Um, at your syllabus. So um, if you want, you could, you know, pause the video right now, go on eCampus, get your syllabus so you can follow along. I'm going to go in that order, but I'm not going to read everything, just the, the highlights, right? Um, okay. I already told you what social marketing is. Check. Um, so what do you need for this class? You do need a book. Uh, and the book is very recognizable. It's super hot pink. All the information is there for you. Um, a lot of people I know in the past have rented the book. 
because um, I guess I don't think it's something they're going to need on their bookshelf for the rest of their lives. Understood. Um, if you end up getting the fifth edition, you probably won't. Th that's the edition before this one. I'm We're up to the sixth edition now. I used to do this class with the fifth edition, and I'm not going to lie to you. Some of the lectures that I like and I don't want to change because I was like, well, that still is pretty good. Um, I might even reference that old textbook. Um, you're free to get the old one if you find a better deal on it, but you do need to be aware that I've, you know, tried to adjust the course for the new edition. So you might have to do a little extra like legwork trying to figure out if they moved around chapters or something like that. But anyway, I think you'll be fine with whatever edition of the book you need. But hear me now. You need the book. Um, this book relies heavily, uh, sorry, this class relies heavily on the book. You need the book. Um, this isn't a class where you can get, by, well, you could get by without it, but if you get caught up on certain things, the book is just such a valuable resource. It has so many examples that I couldn't even generate. And by the way, it's written by these people who, they literally invented social marketing. Like uh, Lee and Cutler, they, they're the grandmother and grandfather of this entire um, area of practice. Um, so, you know, they're the best. They're the best. Um, so make sure you get the book. You need that ASAP if you haven't already gotten it. Um, contacting me, uh, email. <laughs> this is an online course. I'm sure you can figure it out. But I do want to say this. Um, you know, if you have issues, if you, like, if I, this happens all the time, there's a setting wrong in eCampus. It's really hard, you guys. You can't imagine. Like when you have to like update eCampus with all the different dates and stuff that you've used from one semester to another, inevitably I've made some sort of mistake. I also get really confused. I'm teaching two corporate May classes a semester and I sometimes can't even figure out who's in my different courses because maybe you are in another one of my courses and I can't remember. It's just be patient. Be patient. But you might let me, you might need to let me know that I made a mistake or something. Just drop me an email. If, however, um, you are really struggling, like you don't understand what the heck I'm talking about, you don't understand my feedback on worksheets or something like that, it really helps for us to talk on the phone, especially in this class. Um, I would say that in past classes, I have spent time on the phone with at least 50% of the students. Um, it's just more helpful. It, it just allows us to do the types of things that we aren't able to do in an online class where ordinarily I'd be able to just like have a conversation with you to help understand what you understand and what you don't and whatever. I just can't do that online. So um, if, if take me up on that, right? Like if you're really struggling, like just email me and be like, Hey, Dr. Cohen, can we set up a time to talk? I can't promise you it'll be that minute, but um, my schedule's pretty flexible. We can probably, you know, figure out something within um, uh, the next few days or something. Don't wait, for instance, uh, on the day that your worksheet is due to ask for my help because I don't know if I can swing that, right? My turnaround isn't always that good, but um, we will work something out. So um, bottom line is um, reach out to me by email, but um, even but if you think like, you know, it, take advantage of me as a resource as a teacher with more synchronous forms of communication too. If you want to set up a phone, we can do Zoom too, but... <laughs> You really need to see the face more often. <laughs> um, anyway, on that note, actually, about seeing my face, um, each week I post summary lectures that are kind of like this. It's just me talking in the camera with the same goal in mind. It's really just to hit the highlights because it's different when you hear somebody talking about it than when you read it yourself sometimes. I realize some of you might not even need to ever watch the summary lectures, and that's fine if you think you can get through the worksheets that you're going to do each week without them. I don't, you're not required to watch any summary lectures, but I will say that they're usually about 20 minutes long and I cut down only the specific things. I only focus on the specific things you need to know for your worksheet. So some people might find that they only need to watch the summary lectures and not read the book or whatever, you know. Um, I want you to have the book and the summary lectures both as kind of uh, supplemental resources, but you do you, you know, um, whatever you need, whatever works for you, um, it's up to you. Might take some trial and error, that's fine. Uh, <laughs> okay, so structure of the course. Um, you can see on the second page of your syllabus, I have all the grades laid out here, um, the different components. I mean, basically, it comes down to two different, I guess you could say, like categories of assignments. You've got weekly assignments. I call them worksheets. They often are worksheets. Sometimes 
they're like quizzes or something like that though. Um, you need, usually every week there's going to be a worksheet that you need to turn in. All of those worksheets are due on Sunday, um, at midnight, 9.59 technically, whatever. Um, so, um, now <laughs> some of those worksheets are also more involved than others. Uh, I just want to warn you that the course starts off really slow. Like it's like kind of an easy quiz here and there. And then it gets like real, real fast. Like when we are in week three, like that worksheet's going to require a lot of work, a lot of effort for you to kind of put in. So I don't want that to surprise you. Um, if you want to work ahead a little bit, that's fine on some things. On other things, I'm not going to want you to work ahead. So I'm not going to post all that stuff on eCampus ahead of time because, and this is, this is something you're going to have to kind of see to believe. This is a very step-by-step -step process. This isn't a class where you can um, do all the things at once. It really has to be where um, you do one step in the social marketing process. And then once you get that step down, only then can you go on and do the next step. So unfortunately, I know that there's a lot of people who are like, okay, well, I just started this new summer class. So let me see if I can get all the work done in May. Trust me, I sympathize with you. I was that kind of student too, but that's really not how it's going to work. It's really on a week by week basis. So every week you're going to have this assignment. I'm going to grade that assignment. And then based on the feedback that I give you, you're going to go and do your next assignment and integrate it. Okay. Um, so that brings me to another really important point. And then don't worry, I'm a very loopy person in terms of logic. I know, but I promise you I'll come back to those grades <laughs> and how your course is structured. But while I'm talking about these weekly assignments, um, something I really want to stress is how important it is that you read my feedback. I've become like extra testy about this over the years because it's because I, I spend a lot of time giving you feedback. And like I mentioned before, it's like really hard for me to teach when all I can do is write. Like it's much easier for me to talk to you and and kind of like read you and look at your nonverbals and see if you're understanding or not. Um, and I, since I can't do that, I invest a lot of time in making sure that you have all this feedback on your worksheets, but man, I expect you to use that feedback. And if you don't know what I'm talking about in the feedback, then that's when we need to reach out and talk. So there are going to be some times when, you know, um, you're not even allowed to go on to the next assignment until I approve it. And we might have to go back and forth a couple times, right? Before it's right. That, that That's this kind of class, right? Um, it's, it's, um, it can be very intensive in terms of us going back and forth to make sure that you get that one step right. But that's why I really need to make sure that um, after I grade your worksheets, you don't just look at that grade. You actually go in and see what I'm saying because sometimes you could even get a perfect grade on your worksheet. But I'm telling you that there are things that you're going to have to change for next week. And if you don't do it, then you're not going to be able to make a good grade on your next worksheet. Just... Hear me now, believe me later. I don't know what else to say. Because um, I know, I, once I start talking about that feedback thing, I start sounding like a crazy person. And maybe I am. Maybe I am. I use a lot of bold face type and underlining stuff in my syllabus. But that's just because, you know, I've been doing this. I've been teaching this class for like six years. And I'm like, feedback. So anyway, I digress. Um, so anyway, you get, so basically a lot, mo the first half of the, sem most of the semester are these weekly worksheets. Some are really involved. They're going to take you a long time. Some are kind of short. I'll try to let you know each week on these announcements, kind of like what you're in for. Um, the other part of this is your final project. And the whole idea is that hopefully after you go through these worksheets and each worksheet is kind of like an installment of like, if you were designing your own social marketing campaign, uh, what are the steps you would have to go through? So each worksheet's a step. Your final project is putting it all together and writing a proposal as if you were going to a funding agency and saying, hey, I really want to do this campaign to, I don't know, um, make people get vaccinated for COVID. Or I really want to do this campaign that's going to change um, how people eat red meat. Um, you know, like, it, it's like you have some sort of idea and you need to go and convince somebody that you have a whole plan laid out to r run this campaign. Hopefully, I mean, this is how I want the class to be. It doesn't always work out this good, but if you can get it, piece of cake. If you do all of your worksheets right, you integrate all that feedback, the only thing you'll kind of need to do for your final project is just kind of merge them all together to write a paper that synthesizes all the things you've been doing all semester. It shouldn't require 
um, much of any additional research or anything like that. It's kind of like if you did good on all the little pieces leading up to it, your final project, which is about 50% of your grade, um, should already be kind of done for you, right? So if you can just hold on with the work throughout the semester, hopefully the end won't be so taxing, you know? And also hopefully you'll feel confident that you're doing what you're supposed to do because you've kind of already done it, right? Um, but that's it. It's like 50% of your grade is going to be these worksheets. The other 50% is going to be like the climax of those worksheets, which is this final project. Um, additionally, as part of the final project, but like not a paper, I want you to do this. <laughs> I want you <laughs> payback. <laughs> um, I want you to get on um, your video equipment, which maybe now everybody's a lot more, you know, um, comfortable with this after the age of Zoom. Um, and you're going to do a little show and tell, and you're just going to talk to the camera. Maybe some people like to have little presentations. You don't have to do that. You're just going to tell us about the campaign you've been working on all semester. Um, and that's going to be like your final paper is going to be 80 points. This is going to be 20 points, adds up to 100 points. Um, and that's it. So those are the basic components. Um, ah, sorry, somebody's bothering me. I don't even know who this is. And y'all can't be calling me yet because we haven't even started yet. Lee Harris from Big Spring, Texas. It's a stranger. Um, stranger danger. Okay. Um, so I just want to spend the next couple minutes and then I swear I'll shut up. Um, just first of all, I want to say what you need to do this week. There are three things. Well, maybe there's more depending on how you want to do this week. First, you need to do your syllabus quiz. After you're done watching this video, take a look at the syllabus yourself, if you haven't already, and then go and complete the syllabus quiz. You need to do that by the end of the week. Um, th the only like catch with that, like, you know, thing I want to make clear is that um, you, it's, it's a, it should be an easy grade. Like you should easily get like the 10 points that you need for that syllabus quiz, but I make it all or nothing because <laughs> the whole point is I want you to know the policies in the class and where to find what you need. So basically if you get nine out of 10, you need to take the syllabus quiz again until you get 10 out of 10. Um, it's all, you either get a zero or you get 10. So make sure you take that syllabus quiz as many times as you need to, to get um, the score you need. Um, the other thing I want you to do is go ahead and I know like I cringe every time I tell uh, students in this program to do this. I want you to leave an introductory post <laughs> introducing yourselves. I know that half of you guys already know each other. I get it. Um, I looked at the roster. Even I already know some of you, but um, some of you I don't know. And um, besides that, uh, one of the things I want you to do on this discussion board is kind of start brainstorming for a topic that you would want to work with to do your final project on. And remember, even though it's for your final project, technically, it's what you're going to be working on all semester because that's what you're going to be doing for these worksheets. And to kind of like bring us back to what I was saying at the beginning of this, remember social marketing is all about, you know, trying to enact pro-social behavior change in people. This is not regular marketing. So you don't want to think of a topic that's, you know, to generate profit. Every year I have, for instance, like people who are interested in sports. Great. Um, but they'll say, oh, well, I want to do a, you know, I want to, I want to do a campaign to convince the NCAA to, I don't know, treat their players better or something. And I'm like, yeah, that's nice, but that's not like a public change campaign, right? That's more like, I mean, it's a little bit like a lobbying campaign. This isn't about lobbying a specific organization. This isn't about changing politicians mind even. Um, this is about changing public behavior. So every, like, you know, a large proportion of the public. Um, and I don't even want you to worry about what proportion of the public you want to focus on yet. That's one of the steps. We'll have to do that later. Um, but if you, as I, like, for instance, um, I always have people who do um, these uh, adopt, don't shop campaigns, which is great. I'm all for dog adoption. As you can tell, I'm a little bit of a shopper. I do not use puppy mills, though. We actually are... Um, you don't need to know all this, but, uh, you know, I, every year there's somebody who wants to um, do a campaign to influence people to adopt more shelter animals. That is a public campaign, okay? That's something that's just, it's not for profit. It's not for changing any sort of organization. It's for changing people's behavior. It's to try to get them to adopt dogs or cats or whatever. Um, 
Um, it, uh, public health stuff is always relevant. Like I said, environmental type things. Um, look at your book. Look at the examples in there to start getting an idea. And then on this discussion board, I would just like to know basically what you're considering. I'm not going to approve anything yet. I just want to like start, you know, talking this out so that once you do have the worksheet where you have to go ahead and, and pitch a, a project idea for me, you'll already be on the right track. Um, a lot of people, you know, I, I highly recommend pick something that means something to you that you really feel passionate about, you know, like the sports thing. Listen, you know, a lot of sports topics are not appropriate for social marketing, but a lot are. So if you want to do a, a campaign on safe practices to prevent um, concussions or something, um, that would be completely appropriate, right? That would be targeted at, you know, maybe youth who want to like play football or something like that. Those be creative, you know, think about the things that you care about and think about what's the angle that I could convince the public to change their behavior, not just attitude, but behavior um, and, you know, go in that direction. Again, you're not going to be married to anything this week. I just want to hear what you're thinking about. Um, and then um, this is more optional. I do for the next few weeks. I, I have the content posted for the next um, for next week and the week after if you want to get a jump start on that. I'm not going to grade anything earlier than when it's due, but uh, you do, you won't always have this option, but at least for the first few weeks, if you want to get ahead and start working on um, the quiz that's going to be due next week and then the worksheet, which is going to require a lot of research. So you might want to get a jump on it where you have to do some research on the topic you want to work with. Um, you can go ahead and do that too. But again, that's more optional. The only thing you need to do this week is post it to the discussion board and do your syllabus quiz. And um, I think that's it. Um, I'm like, I feel like there's something I'm forgetting to say. And I know you're like, does this bitch have more that she can possibly say? I know. Uh, I, I will I will digress, though. And I guess, you know, if there's additional questions, hopefully the syllabus will answer them for you. And if not, um, feel free to reach out for me by email. Uh, the first um, couple days of this week, I might be a little bit less available than usual, but I'll still be around. So um, no worries. But uh, I look forward to seeing you on the discussion board and uh, getting to know you for the rest of the semester. So goodbye.